And greetings. Happy, what day is it? Thursday. That's right. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Steve Dace Show here, live and on demand. Steve Dace here. We are down a man the next two days. Todd Erzin has the next two days off as he is uh, making one of the most difficult pilgrimages any daddy has to make, saying goodbye to his baby girls. Uh, he did that last year. And now he's doing it again uh, this year. I think it's it's Tessa, right, that uh, is going yep. off to college. Yep. And so he's gone uh, to move her down uh, to school over the next two days. So, Aaron, it'll be you and I flying solo today. Uh, and then tomorrow uh, we'll have a couple of people with us for the day group and bring you as normal of a show as possible tomorrow. We're going to have a special guest on the show tomorrow as well. We don't typically do that on Fridays. We kind of have our normal routine with um, uh, the Dace Group and then Feedback Friday, but we're going to have a special guest with an important conversation on the show tomorrow. So make sure that uh, you are listening to that and uh, a part of that. Also, I want to say thank you. Um, I mean, Nefarious does not even come out on DVD until next week. It is number 12 overall of all movies. All DVD sales of every movie ever made at Amazon.com right now. And the Blu-ray is 25th, I want to say. And so it doesn't even come out until next week. So, I mean, we were ecstatic when we were 39 earlier this week. Now we're 12th, I saw this morning. So thank you very much. And uh, we are launching the Nefarious DVD. You can pre-order it on Amazon right now. Goes on sale everywhere August the 15th. That's next Tuesday. And in accordance with that launch... Next week, we will have a very special announcement on that that I think you will be very, very pleased and pumped to hear. And uh, we are excited to bring you. So make sure you stay tuned for that. that. There's a lot better news on the nefarious front than there is right now on the economic front. I think our, our friend and our colleague, the prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, tweeted out this morning, we are looking at World War II levels of spending without a war going on. So there's no offset there, which means we're just creating debt. We're just creating inflation. I want to pull this out of my Twitter feed. I don't know if I did you see this this morning, Aaron? I want to make sure I have the exact number. I don't want to exaggerate because the exact number itself is is ominous enough. Um, here it is. The average mortgage payment in America. Oh, yeah has gone up 86% since 2020. 86%? 86%? That is some biblical stuff, man. The average monthly rent in America has gone up 25%. We have the most expensive used car market ever in American history. Folks, get a hold of our friends over at Constitution Wealth. Do not hesitate. First of all, it's just smart business to make sure you are in complete control of your portfolio and making wise investments. But how about making moral ones at the same time? Because they can show you how to align your portfolio with your principles, your values, and your profits. Don't have to be at odds anymore. You can both profit while being prophetic. Constitution Wealth can help you with that. Get, go and book an appointment today. Uh, just look at your retirement savings to start off. Get those aligned with your uh, values. Let's start building the parallel economy together. They have aligned over $10 million of wealth out of our audience already since they came on board this year. They can help you as well. ConstitutionWealth.com slash Steve. Again, that's ConstitutionWealth.com slash Steve. All right, coming up at the bottom of the hour, one of... One of the people, one of the few, that without reservation, I would tell you, donate to, and you don't have to babysit them. Matt Staver at Liberty Council is going to join us at the bottom of the hour. Next hour for Theology Thursday, I received an email from one of our listeners, J.R. Burdick, that I thought was so insightful. We're going to take a, a, a pause Besides, Todd's not here anyway. So we're going to pause the kingdom politics study for one week to discuss the theology behind his email and why it is so, his observation is so salient and so important. 
But before we get to all of that, my daughter will be here later for three non-political questions and more. Before we get to all of that, here is Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away, brought to you by Loyalty Boulevard, is a one-way street. Donald Trump was interviewed by Eric Bolling on Newsmax last night, and he said he will not be signing the loyalty pledge required to participate in the upcoming GOP primary debate. reason I wouldn't sign the pledge, why would I sign a pledge of people on there that I wouldn't have? I wouldn't have certain people as, you know, somebody that I'd endorse. So they want you to sign a pledge, but I can name three or four people that I wouldn't it's support for president. So right there, there's a problem. Okay, right there, there's a problem. I but I don't have to ever, use that. Right now, no, I don't saying, want to do that. Which, I don't want to do that. There's no reason to insult them. Uh, uh, but there are some people there that a lot of people wouldn't endorse, but they wouldn't be right. They're not going to go anywhere, by the way. They're not going to get it. But so I wouldn't endorse it. So Trump is so certain he's going to win the nomination that he doesn't need to debate. But he's not going to debate because he won't pledge to support the eventual nominee, which he believes is himself. Clear as mud. Yesterday, House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan and Subcommittee on the Constitution and Limited Government Chairman Mike Johnson released information demonstrating the FBI's Richmond Field Office coordinated with several field offices to produce a memorandum naming mainstream Catholics as, quote, domestic terrorists. The FBI had earlier this year been forced to retract the original memo. FBI Director Chris Wray had previously testified that the action had been taken by a single office, not multiple offices. That, of course, now has proven to be a lie. A man in Utah is dead after an FBI raid on the man's home. At around 6.15 a.m. yesterday morning, FBI agents arrived at Craig Robertson's home in Provo, Utah. The FBI had a warrant to search Robertson's home and to arrest him under suspicion of making interstate threats, threatening Joe Biden and other federal officials. A federal investigation into Robertson began earlier this year after he allegedly posted several social media messages that made quote-unquote credible threats to inflict bodily harm on Joe Biden on social media Some whom claimed to know Robertson described him as a typical elderly man, 300 pounds, who used a walker and who clearly wasn't a threat to anyone. Nonetheless, the FBI shot him dead in his home. A jury has reached a verdict in the trial of investigative journalist Andy No, the Rose City Antifa, that's in Portland, Oregon, and alleged affiliated members, in which they found both defendants, John Hacker and Elizabeth Richter, not liable in the civil case brought against them despite an exceeding amount of video evidence showing them clearly assaulting No. During closing statements, defense lawyer Michelle Burroughs told the jurors that not only does she self-identify as both a progressive and anti-fascist, she strongly declared, quote, I am Antifa. Furthermore, defense attorney Burroughs told jurors that she will, quote, remember each one of their faces. Clear jury intimidation, and it worked. The defendants were found not guilty of beating Mr. Nell. This clip from a sermon of popular pastor and author Matt Chandler resurfaced yesterday, and it's a doozy. One of the firms that's helping us find men said, let me ask you a question, Pastor Matt. If if we find an Anglo 8 and an African-American 7, which one do you want? I said, I want the African-American 7. And he said, what if we find an Anglo 8 and an African-American 6? And then I said, then give me the Anglo 8, because the African-American 6 will look and feel to our people like the kind of tokenism that I'm preaching against. But it's another opportunity for us to find and give power away in a way that's not paternalistic, but man, we see in you the capacity to lead and love and shape, and we want you. Learning Chinese today, today's phrase is no. And finally, a flashback to the year 2021. An oldie but a goodie from comedian Tyler Fisher. Hi, this is a little message to the unvaccinated. Ugh. You are killing everyone. It's your fault. You're being selfish. So get the vaccine because I'm vaccinated. I am vaccinated. Okay. And so I'm protected because the vaccine is safe and effective. So if you're around me and you're unvaccinated, then you're putting me at, at, well, you're not, you're, no. Okay. So you're selfish because if I'm protected and you're around me, then I'm, then I'm fine, but you're, but you're me. Sorry. If you're not vaccinated, then you're not, it's your, um, you're racist is what I'm saying. And that's what happened while we were away. Aaron's montage brought to you by our friends over at Preborn. And they are the client that we hope one day here soon we don't have to promote anymore. Because that means we have stopped killing our own children. Nevertheless, we are not yet at that day. We got a big win last year. And that brought us closer to that day. 
But as recent events in places like Ohio have shown us, there is still a ways to go. Still plenty of babies and their mommies to be saved. And that's what they do at Preborn. They love them both. Uh, whether it is confronting the mom with the reality, the truth of the fact that that is not her body. That is somebody else that is a being with its own heartbeat, etc. And she hears that for the very first time. And, and what they have found over time is about 80 percent likelihood that that mother will not go through with killing her child when confronted with that. However, this now is where mercy and grace come in. That, that mom is still in a, in a deep need of, of support and help. Typically, if you're happily married uh, as a woman, you're not looking to have abortions. It's typically women who don't have that kind of security and support that are. And that's where preborn comes in. They offer all kinds of counseling and support for the mother as well, both pre and postnatal. All of this, including the ultrasounds, are free, provided they have adequate funding from people like us. You can make a tax-deductible gift today. Dial pound 250 on your, on, your, on your device and use the keyword baby, pound 250 on your device, keyword baby, or donate now at preborn.com slash Steve. Donate now at preborn.com slash Steve. Aaron, I just remembered you and I got to come up with something for the, uh, for the overtime okay. today. Um, I'll let you figure that out. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to connect a couple of dots here. Last night, we held a, uh, a screening of the Trump's Rosebud film, which, again, I, is really well done. Trump's Rosebud.com, I think, is where you can go and watch it right now. Really well done. And uh, we held a screening of this movie last night. Probably about, I think we sold about 80 seats in the uh, theater. And we had a Q&A afterwards. So good crowd, good cross-section of people. And uh, we, had, we had somebody who identified as kind of a trans activist came, actually a good conversation with her. Um, not a he. Uh, she's a she. And uh, trying to be a he, but still a she. You'll get a kick out of this, Aaron. No, I was sure I would have come. Uh, afterwards, her and I were chatting afterwards, and she said to me, you know, over here on the left, we all think you're going to nominate DeSantis. And I said, why? <laughs> and she goes, well, because he's the fulfillment of everything you guys talk about all the time. I mean, he actually does the stuff Trump talks about. Oh, sister. And I just looked at her like, you're adorable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, we're really afraid of him. We talk about him all the time. <laughs> I got, I got, I, I laughed out loud at that. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway. Um. The Q&A afterwards, the audience, they brought it up. They wanted to ask questions about Trump and DeSantis. And we, some good conversations and stuff were had. But I, I brought up to the crowd, are you following these court proceedings? Oh, yeah, we know what's going on. I'm like, you guys understand their goal is to make it that you can't vote for him, right? You understand this. They're trying to take him out, like off the board. Either take a plea agreement or um, THX 138 gulag cell block. You understand this, right? And Aaron, even in that room, blank stares. Like... It just will not compute. Yeah. There's a, there's a loyal follower of our content. Might even be listening now. Jeremy Frankel. Mm -hmm. And I responded to something he tweeted me recently. I did yesterday. When I had been pointing out, what, what are we going to do when they're blue state secretaries of state? And they've got blue secretaries of states in, in states we have to win, like Arizona, for example, Wisconsin. What, what happens when they decide they're going to take him off the ballot because he's a quote-unquote convicted felon? And he, like, starts, st you know, uh, quoting right. me the Constitution, right? Yeah. This Andy No story that's in your montage. Was Andy No assaulted? Yeah. Is there clear evidence that Andy No was assaulted? Yes. Yeah. Was the jury shown this evidence? Yes. Yeah. What happened? The defense attorney intimidated the jury and got away with it. Huh. 
The defense attorney intimidated the jury and got away with it. I, I don't know. Maybe I've got to say this every single day. Probably. When are we going to actually believe our own talking points? When are we going to actually believe that our enemies are not as unserious as we are? Andy No, not a conservative, not a Christian, an openly gay man, was beaten to hell in public. The jury was shown all of this. Peace out. I mean, we're out there interviewing what's his nuts that went to Epstein Island for massages from Harvard with the, 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 the ginger. Who am I thinking of? Yeah. I can't even remember I the dude's remember. name. Yeah. yeah, the guy that went to Epstein Island for uh, uh, massages. Okay. He's getting interviewed everywhere to tell us, well, these things have no constitutional bearing, all these charges. For the longest time at best, whether it was through... Dershowitz, that's his name. Dershowitz, yeah, yeah. thank you. The judiciary, legislatively, administratively, the left treated our constitution and laws like the pirate code. They're more like guidelines than actual rules anyway. We're at a point now where they're just flat out... They're just disregarded on their face. Yes. On their face. And we're out here tweeting polls. I, 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 Andy No got beat to hell. If a non-Caucasian gay man cannot get a fair shake, what kind of fairness do you think you'll get? I'll tell you. That's in Aaron's montage, too. You'll have... Trump's appointed FBI director, Christopher Wray, lying about calling Catholics domestic terrorists in a memo. You'll have that. I, I want to know. I, 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 maybe I don't, actually. How much darker does this have to get before we take them as seriously as they're taking us? This is not a show. It is to us. It is not to them. It is not a game. They don't care what your laws say. They don't care what your constitution says. They don't care what a social compact is. We've had all this talk the last few years on the right of, do you know what time it is? It's funny. As soon as this campaign began, we reverted right back to 2016. What's trending? Who's cool? Who's got the best troll? Who's calling the best names? Ha ha! Got him again! Yeah! Zinger! They're out here beating people in the streets. And then laughing at us as they walk out scot-free. If you've got your kid in a government school in a blue state, straight up, any day, you're playing Russian roulette, man. I'll, I'll say it since Todd's not here. I'll drop one of his favorite references. You're at the table in the deer hunter, the red bandana scene. If you've got your kid in a blue state in a government school or in a blue city in a government school in a red state... School starting across the country here in about a week or so. Mm-hmm. Clock is ticking. Every day you send them off to school. Spin the chamber. Is this the day the bullet comes home and your kid says, you know, they told me at school that my real name is Clarice. Who told you that? Mr. Hannibal. Could happen any day. Any day. Maybe this is my fault. You know what? Maybe my biggest strength in this business is I actually care. 
And maybe my biggest weakness in this business is I actually care that I take this very seriously and I take this very seriously. This idea that there's going to be at some point a line that they won't cross. They crossed every other line. They crossed every other line. Aaron, you came to work for me right at the beginning of the 2016 campaign, if I recall. Yep. Were we talking about... Did you know what chest binding was in 2016, Aaron? I didn't. No. Did you know what tuck clothing was? Nope. Yeah. You heard the word fentanyl a lot? Nope. No. Hmm. How often was opioid used in the in 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 the uh, conservative media that uh, your parents groomed you in growing up in a homeschool family? How Rarely. How often do you hear Rush talk about opioids? Rarely. And, as a Rush baby. Yeah. Rarely. You see where I'm going with this? Yep. You ever heard of a non-essential business before? No. No. You ever heard of, you ever seen breathing criminalized? No. Neither did I. Had you heard of a vaccine that didn't actually vaccinate? You ever heard of anything like that before? No. Neither did I. Did you live in a country that you could not work at a corporation of means without being coerced into becoming an experiment? No. Without your consent? No. No. Have you seen, by the way, the latest excess mortality numbers out of Germany and Japan, by the I way? I have indeed, yeah. I mean, just start hanging people now. We're let's doing just, great. In fact, let's just skip the trials. Let's get right to the hangings. I've seen enough. When will we accept this is real? I'm asking. I mean, the, the contrast yesterday morning was fascinating to me. I, I think we talked about this yesterday. Yeah. And people are like, well, it's a better show when he dunks on Chris Christie. Why isn't it a show? You know what I think is kind of a good show? Firing people that are bad. I'm entertained by that show. Are you entertained? Yes. Very much. As opposed to, you know, taking their advice for hiring, you know, among the most important and powerful positions in the federal government, head of the FBI. When are we going to get serious? Well, I need Ron DeSantis to, to pet me. Let's pretend Ron DeSantis was never conceived. His daddy missed that night. Doesn't exist. Florida never happened. We'd be sitting here having the same, all, all the same issues. Correct. I'd still be wondering, when are we getting serious? I don't even want to contemplate, Aaron, where this has to go for us to accept once and for all, oh, they're serious. One, the normies are never waking up, guys. They're never waking up. That's why they're normies. Two, you mentioned coming on board late 2015. During the 2016 campaign, I believed after all of the damage that Barack Obama had done to this country, culturally and politically and administratively, I believed 2016, and I think this was an opinion that was shared uh, by a lot of people on the right, 2016 was an opportunity, maybe a big opportunity, probably a big opportunity, with a deep roster of somewhat to very accomplished people running for president. 2016 was an opportunity to reverse course at the federal level. It's 2024 now. My feeling and what I see 
is that 2024 is our last opportunity to reverse course at, at the federal level. And really, with, with the growth of the federal government, that's basically, that impacts all of us. Unfortunately, I don't see many people sharing that same assessment. To answer your question, what will the, how dark does this have to get to get people to wake up? Uh, get on the train. I think that's your answer at this point, Steve. Get on the train. And you, and you don't mean the Trump train. No. No, you mean the train. The train. Yeah. Go get on the train. That's, that's I, I'm convinced that's when it will get real for most people. We have our heads so far up our sphincters on the right. We've got people, people, really smart people that I respect. Retweeting that poll from Signal that showed Ramaswamy going to, you know, pulling ahead of Ron DeSantis. Guys, that's Ramaswamy's pollster. How dumb is that? Is there one day that we can go by where the majority of the people in this business and on the right, and from what I see on, on Twitter, you know, again, it's not real life. Can we go one day where we can just be intelligent? One day, Steve? One day where we can and, be, just and, and, be serious and, and, and sober. Can we just get one day? I was telling you yesterday, Adobe, it's my, it's my, can I just get one day where all of those Adobe suites on my, on my, on my computer, or can they just all work? I'm asking you the same thing about whatever the right is or the not left is on this, in this country. Can we just get one day? This has nothing to do by the, to absolve the DeSantis campaign from its obvious missteps. I mean, if things were going great, they wouldn't be hiring a new campaign manager. Okay. But that's an excuse. Not for them, for us. Again, all these issues were here before Ron DeSantis showed up to run for president. This is serious. And now you've got Trump saying, well, I, yeah, I won't even promise you that I'll help you beat the Democrats. So here's the deal now. Here's your populist movement now. Your populist movement now is, okay, I won't listen to my own loyalist about the jab. Because, frankly, it's people like Steve Bannon, amongst his, his most ardent and loyal followers, who have done the best work on exposing this jab. Bannon has done better work than I've done on it. He's one of the few people I've learned things from. Won't listen to him on the jab. Won't pay attention. Julie Kelly told us this weekend in overtime, she went to Mar-a-Lago last year, sat down with the president, did she not say this, to show him yep. what was going on with these January 6thers. He has still done nothing. So those loyal people that went to prison for me, leave those people behind. Ron DeSantis is disloyal for running, disloyal to me for running and challenging me. So let's destroy him. And now I won't even pledge to go all in to beat the Democrats next year. It's me or nothing. So now loyalty, as Aaron put in his montage, so that's our counter. Our counter to demons is serve a guy. Um, guy did a lot of good. I don't mind serving him, actually, on some level. I've gotten a good, I've gotten enough payback from it. But that's also not a serious counter. <laughs> that's not serious. That's not He's 80 with a minus 30 net approval. I mean, there's not much better odds he will be president next year than I will be. Between the legal issues and his net favorables and getting elected and then them just stealing elections. And then people say, well, well, it doesn't matter. They'll steal the election. OK, then what's our plan? Does he have a plan Does not get them to steal? Uh, vote Trump. Well, you just told me that they'll steal it. I don't we're not serious they're coming for your kids they've already gotten a lot of them and they want the rest you can't buy a used car you can't buy a home you might die suddenly they're very serious. We need to be much more serious ourselves.
All right, back here on the Steve Day Show, live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. We first heard about Jace Medical last year. Uh, they approached us about coming on the show to market something called the Jace case. And Jace Medical is J-A-S-E. What's the Jace case? Well, they were concerned. I met, I met with these folks uh, personally. They were concerned about what we were seeing post-COVID for two reasons. One, too many of our antibiotics farmed out to countries that hate us like China, which makes our supply chains vulnerable to our enemies. But number two, the way medications like hydroxychloroquine and, 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 and ivermectin were, were smeared. We can debate their effectiveness against COVID. I happen to think they were very effective based on the data I've seen and the doctors I know personally that, used, that utilized it. And people I know that were helped and saved by it, each of them. But that's why we have academic debates or we're supposed to. That's, we're supposed to follow the data. They were concerned. If they could, they could do this to a drug like hydroxy that had been on the market for 60 years, a drug like ivermectin that just won a Nobel Prize in 2015, if they could smear those kinds of drugs, what else could they do? So they came up with this Jace case of venerable antibiotics just in case the next emergency might suddenly decide these things are too dangerous right when you need them. Well, now they're going the next level. They want to make sure that you've got a 12-month backup of your existing medications because you never know when we might let's go Brandon again. All right, so back up your medications, whether it's diabetes, heart health, blood pressure, mental health, the full gamut. They can do that for you at jacemedical.com, J A S E. Answer a few questions just to make sure everything's on the up and up. JaceMedical.com. Use the discount code DACE at checkout for a discount. Hence discount code. Discount code DACE at checkout at Jace Medical. J-A-S-E. JaceMedical.com. We go back to the, the early fight against COVID, Stan. Very few were really willing to run into the fire, especially on the legal front. And I wasn't surprised when I learned Matt Staver at Liberty Council was one of them. And over the years, um, Matt is one of the few people I've seen that is really serious about principle in this business. One of the few people I'd recommend when people say, hey, whom could I give money to? Where would be a good investment? What's not just a direct fundraising mail operation, but is actually taking scalps from the spirit of the age? Well, I mean, what Matt does is one of them. That's why I've been a donor myself. And Matt Matt Staver joins us now here on the show. Matt, it is good to have you back here on The Blaze, brother. How are you? Very good. Good to be with you, Steve. So, Matt, I was, um, we had a surprise birthday party my wife did for me a couple weeks ago for my 50th birthday. And I was, I was confiding to some friends at the event, and I ended up posting about it on, on Twitter, that I am, like, I'm struggling to just move on from the last three years. And let's just pretend none of this happened. It's not really politically convenient for anybody. One side doesn't want to get into it. Of reconciliation because they're so tied to big pharma and big government it would expose them the other side doesn't want to have whoever signed the checks for operation warp speed be called into question so it's not convenient for them and so i got thousands of people in my inbox for two years who lost lives loved ones jobs connection to family members family members who died alone and so i'm i'm supposed to just forget all of that turn the page and move on to the next chuckle hut, uh, click ratio. This is the new talking point troll that we're all doing today. And emotionally, I'm having a hard time doing it. I'm having a hard time not resenting being asked to do it, frankly. I'm having a hard time setting it aside. I'm having a hard time not letting it filter into my day-to-day analysis of what's going on in, the, in, in our contemporary politics, because I've got this thing in the back of my brain, this reminder of all this suffering that I sifted through within my own audience over the last few years. And those people, in many cases, have still not been given any justice or even an acknowledgement whatsoever. This caught your eye when I talked about this on Twitter, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show. Tell us why. Well, it's exactly my same uh, belief as well in my experience. Uh, So when I saw that, I thought I needed to reach out to you because what you said in that uh, communication is a great expression, not only for me, but I think for a lot of people, certainly those of us who know what's going on, have been involved in what's going on. We were involved in this from the very beginning in March when the first lockdown began to happen regarding churches. We thought that that was absurd, unconstitutional. We ended up winning. We ended up projecting that what was going to happen is people would 
have depression, suicide, alcohol abuse, sexual abuse, domestic abuse, all that would rise. In fact, it did. People have been abused. People died. We know of high school athletes who committed suicide because they were so depressed that they couldn't go back and complete their last year, for example, mm -hmm. of football or whatever sport game it was in. Then uh, we saw, for example, this uh, mandate that came out in 2021. Uh, and we also saw people, I had friends early on that felt pressured to get these COVID shots. Uh, we warned against them for several reasons. There was just not enough testing. It's mRNA, it's brand new technology. It's not your typical vaccine. We just don't know what's going to happen. And then when we saw the data, we started to realize, look, these are not safe. These are not effective. I had friends, very close friends, people that are irreplaceable that took this because they trusted the government. And that's, I think, what we can never forget. They trusted the United States government, the agencies, Dr. Fauci and others, uh, and even the medical community to say, look, you can do this and we can all pull together. It's safe, it's effective, let's all take this and we'll move on. And they died. We have people that we're working with, tens of thousands of people that we've helped, people that have lost their jobs, but people who are now <laughs> disabled. Uh, some of those are gone, but some of those are living through the pain and the disability. Uh, we have one of our clients uh, who was a 20 year nurse, head of OR in Maine. Maine already had a shortage of healthcare workers. Now she's working construction just to, to put food on the table. Our case is still ongoing. We have doctors, doctors who I relied upon that brought me through COVID. That like you said, they did their research with hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, so many other nutraceuticals and medications, and they've helped so many people, and they're being targeted, targeted because they're being threatened with the loss of their board certification. We have people right now that we're still working with that are trying to get organs, and they're being denied organ transplants because they refuse to take the COVID shot for various religious reasons or other reasons. So we can never forget this, and this is something so serious of a magnitude of genocide that is unfathomable, that was perpetrated and promoted by our government in terms of censorship, propaganda, and the medical community too, at least some of these associations. Many medical doctors, they stood up, but they're getting targeted for their stance, for their research, for their treatment. And this is happening around the world. So we can never forget, you know, the, the Jewish people, have a phrase, never forget, when they look at certain things that happened to them in the past history. This is one of those that we must never forget, but we must work hard now to make sure that we never go through this again, and that those people and those agencies that are part of this propaganda, part of this destruction, part of the crashing of the economy, part of the trashing of humanity, frankly, people who are still dying from this, that they're held accountable. And so what you wrote, I think, resonates with me. It's exactly what I believe. We're not going to forget. I know you're not going to forget, but we need to make sure that other people don't just brush this under the, the rug, because I can tell you what, and you know this as well, when you look at the world scene with the World Health Organization and others, Joe Biden, they're wanting to roll this out on a global scale so that we have these vaccine health digital passports so that they can dictate to us everything that we should put in our body. And if we don't follow their dictates, then we won't be able to work, go to church, move, travel. We won't be able to go to school. We won't be able to exist. How much of what's going on here, Matt, is that a lot of our people just don't still understand that our enemies are more serious than we are. And, you know, I, I go back when I was a kid, there were the great Ron, the great line from Ronald Reagan that a recession is when your neighbor doesn't have a job. A depression is when you don't have one. Just substitute mm -hmm. those terms into any form of 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 government treachery. OK, um, an inconvenience is when you read and a terrible thing to find out is when you read someone else lost their job because they wouldn't be a, a, you know, they wouldn't consent to be a, a being in a perpetual experiment for a drug company. You can't sue if they kill you. Um, oppression and tyranny is when you're the when you're the subject and it happens to you that it it just still which I'm, it's amazing to say we all were locked down. We all had our breathing criminalized. We all had the, those syringes pointed right at our right at our arms. We all did. And yet I still think for a lot of people, it just they didn't suffer enough 
And so this idea that we're all just going to put this behind us now, I mean, the excess mortality numbers among Gen Xers and millennials in Germany and Japan is skyrocketing. And we're just going to act like... <clears throat> Nothing to see here, man. Hey, did you see the latest polls? And that's a great troll. And wow, that was funny. And we're owning the libs. I mean, I just, I just don't think a lot of our own people yet understand the serious stakes that we're playing for here on a cosmic and existential cultural scale. Am I wrong? No, I think you're right. <laughs> I think there's also another part of people that they just want to move on and forget about it because that's something very negative and they want to just move on and forgive and forget and live happily ever after and just ignore the reality of what's taking place. Look, this was a test and we failed it miserably. And uh, since we failed this test, there are people who are monitoring this and they realize, you know what, if they want to lock down the world, control the world, reduce humanity, if they want to become the global dictator, the best way to do it is through some pandemic virus that's released, manufactured, whatever it may be, because it worked. It worked. And they know the template. And there are people that are creating that now, and they're creating the technological infrastructure so that you are locked down. So imagine if we had this technological infrastructure that, that they're pushing forth now uh, globally, and the Biden administration is behind it with the WHO during 2020, 2021. Imagine the churches, for example, when they would say, you can't have any meetings, but you can have an abortion, kill your children, but you can't have any uh, meetings. And uh, some pastors like we represented decided, you know, enough is enough. We're going to do it anyway. What if they logically just shut them down, mm -hmm. froze their bank accounts, froze their personal accounts, shut off their utilities and just anybody who stepped foot anywhere near that because of tracking, they just shut them down. Uh, that's where it's going. So we must never forget. We must also understand that there's a lot of suffering that has taken place, a lot of suffering that is still taking place, and a lot of suffering that <clears throat> will take place as a result of what we've been through and the residuals of these mRNA uh, drugs that they injected into people. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, I think we, we grow up wanting to trust our government. And I love the United States of America. I think it's the greatest nation and it has the best opportunity for freedom. But I also understand that there are some bad actors and some bad agencies. And the best way to have an impact not only in the United States, but globally is to infiltrate these agencies with people who have secularist, anti-God, anti-freedom, anti-life mm -hmm. worldviews, and then impose that on the rest of us. And unfortunately, what we've seen is that the swamp is worse than what we anticipated. And so there are some really bad actors in these agencies. Anthony Fauci is just one of them. He's certainly one yeah, of them. Yeah, he's a hydra. Uh, yeah. Yeah he, yeah, he is. And so we need to reform the agencies. We need to reform the entire medical system, frankly, because what we saw in COVID is that the federal government was doling out monies to these mega hospitals and conglomerates, and that was controlling the medical protocol. And the medical protocol was remdesivir and vents, and they didn't work. And yet, if you didn't do that protocol, then you wouldn't you weren't going to be getting the money. And so these medical facilities, they control a lot of the private practitioners. And so the, the whole medical system we found is broken in large part. The agencies that are supposed to be the watchdogs have become the lapdogs for pharma. And that is the NIH, the CDC, and the FDA. They need to be reformed, but the people involved need to be held accountable as well because they intentionally lied. Look, we all know now that they intentionally lied when they said 14 days to flatten the curve. They knew that was a flat mm -hmm. out lie. There was no basis for it, and they did it anyway. And then they came up with, well, we need another 14 days to flatten the curve. Then it moved into weeks and months. And for some places, even more than a year. They knew it was a lie from the very beginning, and yet they imposed it on the people, despite the fact that they saw human suffering, people dying, they saw that these shots were not safe. They saw that they were not preventing transmission. They still lied to the American people, and those people and those agencies need to be held accountable. All right, if folks want to help you hold them accountable, Matt, and defend some really good patriotic people from this uh, ongoing tyranny and uh, the collateral damage from the last few years, how can, they go, how can they find you if they need help, number one, and then number two, if they want to support you, how can they do that? 
Steve, they can go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org, lc.org. And on the website, there's a legal help tab. If you have a legal help or need, just fill out that form. We'll be back in touch with you. We work with tens and tens of thousands of people around the country. We don't charge anything for our services. That's our ministry. And you want to give, we're nonprofit, uh, lc.org. There's a donate tab right there on the front page as well, lc.org. Matt, thank you. I know I've thanked you before. We've had you on several times, but uh, uh, you were one of the few that that recognized what time it was, understood the signs of the times and what to do about them. And uh, uh, proud to have you on and support you. And uh, just thank you for, you know, finish the race, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for never forgetting and making sure that others don't forget what we've been through. Amen. Thank Thank you. you, Matt. God bless. Aaron, what do you think? Again, going back, harkening back to the last segment, a lot of people rightly talk, do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Do do we really? Matt does. You do. I think all three of us on this show know what time it is. But I'm not sure how you penetrate. Just like I'm not sure how did the... How did the, what was the, was it Dylan Mulvaney on, on Bud Light? I don't know how that penetrated so far into the zeitgeist that it made the difference that it did. But I'm not sure how you penetrate into the zeitgeist that we should never forget. We cannot forget. And Matt, I think maybe one of the most truthful things that he, that he said there, just on a visceral, visceral level, People just don't want to think about negative things. It's childish. I'm sorry. But that's humanity. We just don't want to think about negative things. Even if that negative thing was one of the most evil actions perpetrated on this planet, certainly in the, in the West, in our lifetimes, it makes me feel bad. Don't want to think about it. Unfortunately, I think Matt was right about that. I think that's really what a lot of this is. It's just a, it's negative. It's, it's a bad part of my mind. We just want to move on to something more positive. I don't know what you do with that. And who knows? Maybe if the greatest generation had not been dragged in to the worst theater of war in all of human history, they wouldn't have wanted to confront it either, Aaron. But when you come to the literal brink of losing Western civilization forever... That'll wake you up, right? Yep. That's why I'm afraid of what, ha- what else has to happen. Where else does this need to go before we realize, oh bleep, they're serious. Theology Thursday is next. We're on. We're on. Did we lose feed? No. No. Did it come unplugged? (laughs) My thing came apart. (laughs) Perfect. I'm just sitting here waiting for my cue. No. My headphones got disconnected. You hear them now? Yeah. Then maybe that was my other ear went out. (laughs) I was starting to think that. (laughs) Oh, gosh. We are back with hour two live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Steve Dace here with. Aaron McIntyre, no totters in today. He is uh, fulfilling one of the uh, most important but difficult daddy obligations, saying goodbye to one of your baby girls, moving her into university this weekend. So Todd will return on Monday. Hey, don't forget, by the way, we are doing that fundraiser for Sam Sigaloff. One of the chapters in our book, Rise of the Fourth Reich, Daniel Horowitz and I announced this yesterday. Special commemorative autographed editions of the best-selling book, Rise of the Fourth Reich. Daniel and I are taking all of our uh, author uh, proceeds from this uh, commemorative edition and donating them all to Sam. Uh, they're, they're basically just trying to end Sam. Uh, for daring to defy the military mandate. They're now trying to stop him from even getting cleared with medical boards in the private sector, and he needs help. And he's exhausted all of his money fighting back and all the legal fees therein. So we are donating all of our author proceeds to this best-selling book, this commemorative edition, all of it to Sam. So we're getting nothing from this. If you want to get an autographed copy, 
exclusive run of Rise of the Fourth Reich. Go to Fourth Reich Book, R E I C H. R E I C H, Fourth Reich Book.com is where you want to go. Fourth Reich Book.com. We already sold a couple hundred of these yesterday. So I think we're only doing a print of a thousand or fifteen hundred. It's a very limited print. And our hope we're charging uh, $40 a book. That, but that includes shipping and everything else. And so our hope is that we can raise, if we sell all those out by the time the overhead is paid for, <clears throat> Daniel and I would clear about 20 grand or so out of that. And that would be a good sum of money to help with uh, some of, at least some of Sam's legal bills. I mean, he, he stood in the gap. He stood tall. He was a soldier, a patriot. He stood for us, and now this is our opportunity to stand for people like him, as you just heard Matt Staver at Liberty Council talking about. All right, so go to fourthreichbook.com, R-E-I-C-H, fourthreichbook.com, and get your special autographed edition of Rise of the Fourth Reich and uh, help one of our one of our heroes, Sam Sigaloff, with, uh, with his, his ongoing battle. Let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. Steve at SteveDace.com. D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, MeWe, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. Find me as well over on Truth Social at Real Steve Dace there. And again, the last name is D-E-A-C-E. If you like the show, leave us a five-star review, please, on the podcast platform of your choice. And thanks to all, many of you thousands of you that have done that for us already please keep those coming and then uh, hit subscribe or if you're on itunes follow because that's how you'll guarantee that every time we do a new episode it shows up right in your feed automatically and thank you to all of you that have done that too theology thursday brought to you by sweat block summer is here the dog days of summer are here make sure you're protected whether it's the heat outside or you know when the heat is on your body kind of reacts, you know, stressful situations, job interviews, first dates, etc. You struggle with excessive sweating, you want protection, sweat block gives that to you. Their their OG, their fundamental product is the are the antiperspirant wipes. That's where they made their bones. And they're outstanding. My son's used them. He raves about them. Uh, but uh, they've got plenty of other great products as well. Their deodorant stick packs a wallop. My personal favorite, I love the deodorant lotions for the more Uh, sensitive regions they can get swampy this time of year you have protection from sweat block take advantage of 20 percent off with my name dace when you check out use the promo code dace at checkout for 20 percent off when you go to sweatblock.com 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 promo code dace for 20 percent off for theology thursday i am going to call an audible And we'll get back to the Kingdom Politics book study next week when uh, Todd returns, and he'll be here with us as well. I received an email yesterday from a listener named J.R. Burdick. And I think he makes a very important point. And I think it speaks a lot to what has happened to the country and what is happening now and whether or not what we do in response will succeed in the future. That's it, Aaron. I think it only speaks to the past, present, and future wholly and totally. Only? That's all I think it does. Uh, Seems a little limited in scope there. (laughs) Indeed. So I thought it deserved a few minutes of time. Okay. Dear Steve, enjoy your show. I do pray your hearing comes back, and I'm thankful for the progress you've been given. In talking with somebody at church about politics recently, he asked me the difference between the two parties, Republicans and Democrats. What came out of my mouth and what I said in response shocked me. The difference is the Republicans believe the doctrine of men. And the Democrats believe in the doctrines of demons. One is narcissistic and the other is nihilistic. And it kind of surprised me when I said it. Thought I'd share it with you. 
I, I think one of the most profound things I've ever said, or maybe one of the few, <laughs> one of the few profound things I've ever said never happened on a microphone. And I, I've told this story before when Anastasia, who will be here at the bottom of the hour with three non-political questions, she, uh, she came up to me one day when she was a little girl. She had a knack for asking questions that would put you on your hind, on your hindquarters. Just cut right to, the, right to the quick. And one day she asked me, Daddy, what's a man? And I said, what? What's a man? You talk about manning up and being good men. I hear you talking to other men on the phone all the time. Well, what is a man? What do you mean by that? And I kind of prayed for the right answer. And then I opened my mouth and I was stunned at what came out because it was much smarter than me. And I looked at her and she had these huge, big, beautiful brown eyes as a little girl. And she still does. And uh, I looked at her and I said, well, princess, a, a man is somebody who does what he thinks is right, even when he doesn't want to, because he loves the people he's doing that for more than he loves himself. And then I paused to get her reaction. And she kind of looked at me for a second. Is that legit? She's maybe six, seven, eight years old. She looked at me for a second. Is that legit? And when she saw that that's the best I got, she just kind of nodded her head and said, okay, and went off and back to playing with her siblings. Now, she probably doesn't remember that moment. I have never forgotten it. It's, it is, you know, seared into the frontal lobe of my brain. One of those, you know, benchmarks, and I'm sure you're already developing them as a young father, Aaron, yeah. the things that you will remember years later after they're grown. And you'll struggle to remember other details, and then there are some of those moments that you can remember as if they're happening right in front of you right now again. And that moment is one of them for me. And it sounds, JR, like you had one of those moments at church recently. You got asked a question that you probably thought there was an obvious answer to, but you've not yet really been challenged to articulate it in a very plain and specific way. And then when challenged to do so, you're back on your heels a bit. Because you thought, well, I kind of thought this was like self-evident. How do I quantify things I thought everybody knew? And then you gather yourself for a moment. Think about it or pray about it. And you open your mouth and something very profound spews forth. The difference between Republicans and Democrats is that Republicans believe in the doctrine of men while Democrats believe in the doctrine of demons. Politically, there are other differences between the two. Democrats adore and inspire their base. Republicans hate and conspire against their base. Philosophically, there are claimed differences between the two. Too often... You didn't see that for many years, and really only in recent years have you seen it because Democrats have moved so far left that even a lot of Republicans who hate us just can't bring themselves to go that far left themselves. And so that has drawn the lines even starker than they used to be, but we're often not the ones drawing those lines. The, the enemy is. But those are strategic or cultural or merely political distinctions and differences. Theologically, and since you were talking at church, that's the primary conversation you should be having, as you were. Theologically, what is the difference? Exactly what JR just articulated. For a long time, so I said JR's email touches on what has happened, what is happening. And what will determine what ultimately happens. So let, let's address each of those, Aaron, if you don't mind, all three of them. You bet. Past, present, and future. For a long time, let's talk about the past. For a long time, on the right, we operated under the assumption, and for a long time it was true, that the degradation of the culture the secularization of the culture 
was largely confined to the opposition. And that we were immune from it. It had not touched us yet. That we were upholding a higher standard. And therefore, we were more moral. We were more critical thinking, more honest. For a long time, this was true. It no longer is. And realizing this, learning this truth, almost drove me out of this business. Because I, I didn't get into this business to argue with my own audience. I got into this business to champion my audience. And if, if I'm now talking to people that have largely abandoned the fundamentals of my own worldview, it's going to be very difficult for me to not be at odds with my own audience. And maybe you guys have never run a business before, but it's typically not the most successful business model to be at odds with your primary customer base. And the more successful you are, the more aligned you are, and the more aligned you are, the more successful you are. Is a company successful because it's giving people a product they want? Or is it because you're giving them a product you want? they want, you're successful? And the answer, of course, is yes. I am far more exhausted by arguing with you than I am the other side. I've got endless energy arguing with them. I'm like Steve Rogers. I could do this all day, just hopefully not, you know, beat to hell. <laughs> okay. But I, I, I mean, I get a charge out of that. I, I, I got into this to fight them for you, to champion, to be your, to champion you. It's exhausting to have to push back on my own audience. It's exhausting. It's also difficult. It's challenging. It's perilous. You got to thread quite the needle, man. But if I'm a biblical worldview guy, and that's what drives me, and a lot of my potential audience on the right no longer is, Aaron, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. We're unevenly yoked right out of the get-go. And when I say biblically, biblical worldview, I'm not even getting into, is Jesus your only, do you believe Jesus is the only path to heaven? I'm talking like Ten Commandments. Did, 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 is there a creator God? Did he give us Ten Commandments? You know, America's civil religion as Abraham Lincoln called it. If we're not, I mean, then because if, if you don't have that basis and I do, and I frankly, I hope my basis is actually a far more advanced and developed biblical worldview than that, actually. But if we don't even share that very limited basis together, if we don't even share that, then when, when we are confronted by enemies we're going to be at odds about what the strategy is to oppose because we're going to see the enemy differently. We're going to see what's driving and motivating the enemy differently. Maybe you were one of those people that thought gay marriage was just about if we give them visitation rights, they'll leave us alone. Give them civil unions, they'll leave us alone. And people like me told you all along, they're never leaving you alone. The point of this is to get affirmation from the government so they can then use the government to be weaponized against you getting affirmation further so that their worldview replaces yours. But if you don't have a biblical worldview, you're frankly not going to see that. Because ultimately, the number one reason that you would defend marriage as a, as a man and a woman, the, not the only, did I say it was the only? No. no. But the number one reason you ultimately will is because who is the number one person who first declared marriage is between a, a man and a woman? Who? God. And so if you don't align with him on that, then eventually your price point to sell will be reached. See, I don't have one because I don't believe I can sell that point. It's not mine. It's his. I, I, it's not for sale. It, I, it's not that I don't like you. It's not that I don't want to sell out. I can't. I, don't, I, I, it, it, I am not in possession of what you're asking me for. I couldn't give it to you if I wanted to. It's not mine. It's his. 
But if you don't have a biblical worldview, you're not going to see it that way. And so you'll hold out for a while, you'll hold out for a while, you'll hold out for a while, but then eventually the price point of when it's just too difficult to hold out will be met and you'll give in. So the first thing this addresses is the past. We, have, we are as secularized as they are. Now we retain some basic presupposition of Americana, mainly because we love America and they don't. And so we're often actually arguing points we don't even understand or making defenses that we, we, we really truly don't get because we're doing it instinctively. Like we instinctively know this was a great country and it should be and it could be again and it stood for the right things and we want it to without truly understanding the why for every one of those reasons. Can you guys think of any politicians we've anointed as heroes recently that, that might embody what I just described? Me neither. So let's move on. Then we get to the present. And so since we are now as secularized as they are, or even if we're not, we're still way too secularized ourselves. We're godless too. We're just arguing degrees. When we get to the present now, that's where the disagreement for solutions is going to really be a problem. Because the temptation will be, since our worldview is similar to theirs, we should behave similar to them. We see it works for them, so why wouldn't it work for us? Gaslighting works for them. Why wouldn't it work for us? Trolling works for them. Why wouldn't it work for us? Victimization works for them. Why wouldn't it work for us? Over the course of your career in this business since I hired you in 2016, the three things I just mentioned, Aaron, have they not become hallmarks of the of business on the right? Yes. Gaslighting, trolling, victimization. The number one thing to be on the right is a victim of the left. Number one thing. We are adopting their methodologies because we're both secularized. And so, and this is one of the reasons why they kick our ass. They're always going to be better at being of the world than us. Always. Because that's their native tongue. They were, parcel tongue is what they speak. Slytherin light is never beating Slytherin. That gets us to the future. Eventually, when a culture reaches irreconcilable positions within itself, you have two options. Reformation, which comes after revival, and revolution, which comes usually without revival. What was unique in our circumstances, we actually had revolution with revival. That's unique like in all of human history. Like, I can't think of a country that happened before, ever. Revival and then revolution. We had revival in the pulpits. And then when the king arrived and said, I am God, people said, no, I, I just went to church last Sunday and I'm, I heard from a revival authority known as the word of God, that God is God and you are not. And we will worship God and not man. Typically, revolutions happen minus revival. See France. And so you reach the, 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 this thing reaches ahead. The Bastille gets stormed. And after they're done cleaning out the, uh, the, 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 the dynasty of Louis XVI and his acolytes, where'd they go next? The church. They went to the church next. And they brought the cardinals and the bishops and they put them under the guillotine too. And they got rid of the statue of the Virgin Mary and they put up one to the goddess of reason and they declared a reign of terror. Power to the people. But the people are sinners. Turns out we don't want to be told we're sinners. So if you're not with us, you're with them. So guillotine for you as well. You're not a transcendent institution. We judge you. 
Who gave you the authority to judge the church? We gave it to ourselves. Whose native tongue is that? We gave it to ourselves. We know what's best. We're not sinners. We're basically good. Sounds very similar to, I will be like the Most High. I will ascend. Ye be like God. Whose language, who did I just quote? Theirs. Yeah. Because that's what, that's what their father says. And most of the time, at least with the French Revolution, you got some idea of personal individual freedom out of it. Most of the time, when you have revolution without revival, you just end up with tyranny. That's called Vietnam, Korea, Mensheviks and Bolsheviks. And we are headed there. And that's a road to nowhere. That's not a win. That's not America. That'll be something else. If our rights don't come from God, then they come from a human power. And that human power ultimately cannot be trusted because it is human. And therefore, you don't have any rights. They're arbitrary. They can be taken away at any point. Only God is good. Only God can be trusted. Only God is immutable, unchangeable, sovereign. Those are theological statements. But they're also the basis of our way of life. And why our revolution was successful in ways no other revolution in American history was. And yet those are principles that very few are talking about right now. Instead, we're talking about one side wants Nero, the total state. The other side wants Red Caesar. Here's the problem. Red Caesar set the stage for Nero. Caesar, the great war hero, the great fighter, was given the key to the city. He never gave it back. Instead, he bestowed it to his ward, Octavian, who would go on to become the first Roman emperor to do what? Declare himself to be God. As all the rest of them did until Christianity arrived and took over the Roman Empire in the 4th century. For hundreds of years, Roman emperors declared themselves gods. In other words, rejecting God, no matter how righteous, moral, the motivation you thought for it was lent itself to godlessness in the form of another god. There will be a god. God or any of the enemy's pantheons, a fake ones. But there will be a god. There will not be Red Caesar versus Nero. There will be, we have no king but Jesus or Nero. There will not be Red Caesar versus Nero. There will be the Maccabee revolt. No, you do not get to desecrate the temple. Because that is God's, not yours. Or there will be desecration. You see what I'm saying here? There will be no middle. There will be no middle. It will, there will be heaven or hell, and there will be no middle. Either the Holy of Holies belongs to Antiochus Epiphanes or belongs to God's covenant people. Either the laws of nature and nature's God are real or they're not. There isn't a middle ground. Now, we're increasingly uncomfortable with this because we have, going back to the past, been increasingly secularized. But whether we're comfortable with it or not doesn't change the reality of it. Everything I'm telling you is backed up by every single page of the greatest best-selling book of all time, not to mention 7,000 recorded years of all of human history. Testify to every word I just said to you. Christ or chaos, heaven or hell, God or the devil, no middle ground. There's only two kingdoms. The kingdom of man, kingdom of the enemy, or the kingdom of God. 
You're in one or the other. You're not kind of in one and not in the other. A nation isn't kind of in one and not in the other. Whether it's nations, whether it's families, whether it's individuals, we're in one or the other. Nihilistically, the other side understands this. And so they are forcing and pressing the advantage to join their side. Narcissistically, we are holding out and think that there, there will be a third way, a clever way. There won't be, I promise. There never has been, and there never will be. Because this is our father's world, not ours. He rules, he reigns, not us. And we will recognize his reign, or we will recognize reality of life without it. Aaron, I'll give you the last word. Last week on this segment, we were talking about uh, kingdom politics, Dr. Tony Evans' book, and economics, kingdom e economics. And I said one of the biggest lies that I've heard in um, my career is fiscally conservative, socially liberal. Another lie, and it's related to this one that I've heard, one of the biggest lies, and you heard this a lot around the marriage debates of a decade, decade and a half ago, you can't legislate morality. I actually used to believe that for a while. When in fact, morality is the only thing that you legislate. Someone's morals, it, 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 amazing, the, the, the people who say you can't legislate morality never seem to be able to answer the question, can you legislate immorality? Morality, somebody's morality is going to be legislated. And when we talk about politics, which is why we're all here, really, in a biblical worldview, politics, what it should be in this country is how we do civil war without shooting each other. We're in what politics is, we are choosing people to legislate on our behalf. But when the rights, legislation, rights, stated beliefs, their ethics and their morality are coming from nothing more than man, I don't care if it's, if it's a man wearing a red hat or a man with purple hair with a missing appendage and fake boobs. If your morality is coming from man, you will always end up at the same place. Nihilism will swallow narcissism whole and will not spit out the bone. As our friend Bob Vanderplatz likes to say, we have to look higher. It's our only hope, literally. Well said. If you are a business of one, then man, you're out there grinding, killing yourself for absolutely every dollar you earn, whether that means paying a CPA, bookkeeper, payroll, other administrative services, and every dollar out, that can be a painful check to write. That's why there's a better way. It's called collective.com, built specifically for businesses of one just like you. Particularly if you're making over 60000 a year in profit, they can handle all that stuff for you. And that used to cost you a pile of money for a fraction of the cost. Um, and you can save on your membership and lock in their lowest price of the year right now until September 1. Price goes up September 1. So lock in your lowest rate ever for a full year today. And to sweeten the deal, 100 extra dollars off when you go to collective.com slash Steve. Collective.com slash Steve. Why do you want to do this? Well, taxes, bookkeeping, accounting, payroll. Those things are kind of important if you're running your own business. And they can handle all of that for you. In fact, collective members save on average about $10,000 just in taxes by changing it to an S-Corp tax status, which they can help manage for you as well if you're an LLC or sole proprietorship. All right, take advantage of it right now. Collective.com slash Steve. Lowest price ever until September 1. Then the price goes up. And an extra 100 bucks off at Collective.com slash Steve. That's Collective.com slash Steve. It is time now for three non-political questions. We all have questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Who am I? A search and a question of identity. Why am I here? A question of meaning and purpose. Where am I going? A question of destiny. Some better than others. What sort of morality or proto-morality would you expect to find in a chimpanzee troop? Injecting some levity into the demise of Western civilization. It's three questions on The Steve Day Show. 
All right, back here on the Steve Day Show with my daughter, Anastasia, with her three non-political questions. I hope these are good um, because we kind of need you to carry us home here in the final furlong. So no pressure, sweetie. I, I also need to add as well. I don't know how we've been letting her get away with this, but originally three non-political questions. When I was doing it, I had to answer the questions as well. So maybe today this is a good opportunity for Anna to, to answer her own questions. What do you say? Okay. You answer too. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. All right. Cool. Okay. So my first question for you guys. Wow. This is so, I look so much better at this angle where Todd sits. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Well, okay. that's important, too. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really girl thing. Okay. What advice would you give to people who are having a hard time staying determined? What is it that you are determined to do? Like, first of all, does it matter to stay determined about whatever you're determining? When I wrote out this question, I more so thought of it in the context of like where we're at in the world and as a culture and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So specify it then. Okay. All right. So re-ask me, ask me that question again, but more specifically. Okay. So what advice would you give to people who are having a hard time staying determined in the culture that we are in today? I don't know another way. I, I, I'm just, uh, that doesn't mean I don't get discouraged. That doesn't mean I don't. We're doing this again. I just did that at the top of the show today. You know, how many, how many I, you know, I feel like I'm going to have to say every day for the foreseeable future, we've got to get serious about this. But this, again, I think comes down to worldview. Worldview is destiny. And I represent a worldview that my life is not my own. I was bought at a high price. What does that mean? It means someone owns me and they earned it because they, they suffered what I should have. They died the death I should have. They, they accepted upon themselves the penalty I deserved. And so they've earned it. Like when somebody gives their life for you, mm -hmm. suffers for you, you're indebted to them, right? And so the one who did that for me also tells me now that I am to be a living sac sacrifice for him. And for how long? to finish my race to the last day. Now, you know, at my age, that could be goodbye, cruel world with a chest grabber here in 10 minutes. That could be 40 more years. Don't know when that last day will be, right? Mm -hmm. But, but that, that, is what is, that's, that is what is asked of me in exchange to all that was already offered and given for me. And I'm not saying, by the way, that finishing the race is an easy or simple thing. It isn't. It's hard. It is not nearly as hard, though, as what he did for me. And so I'm getting the better deal here. I get eternity in exchange for this temporary. That's not easy, not simple. And the odds are getting higher that, we'll ha that it'll get worse the longer, the longer this goes on. And the harder it will get, to, it, it will get harder to persevere and finish the race the longer it goes on. But eternity is going to be longer than however long this was, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, I would start there. What's your end point? If, if, if the end point is eternity, that makes it easier, not, or, or simpler, not easier, to finish, to stay determined, as you said. If, that, if you take your eye off eternity, though, and just focus on where we're at right now, well, then you're a little bit like Peter when he walks out of the boat, right? He's walking on water when his eyes are up, right? When he looks down, what happens? He sinks, you know? And so eyes up, eyes on me, the Lord says, eyes on me, and we keep going. And, but when we take our eyes off of him, that's when determination is hard. And, and, and despite all of our comfort, there's another reason that this is hard in our time. Our comfort makes it hard because we have so many distractions. But the other thing that makes it hard is, frankly, a lot of our churches aren't encouraging us to do what I just said. And a lot of us, frankly, a lot of you go to churches where you're just kind of hoping that that Sunday when you're there, the pastor doesn't, like, undermine what you're trying to do, let alone, like, cheer you on and encourage you and tell people to follow your lead. And so we don't have the, we don't have the kind of support 
that other eras had where the church was more marginalized. It was the church was more threatened. And so it was also, by the way, more revived. It was more alive. It was more edgy. And so there was more encouragement to go in there and finish your race. And so that's, that becomes a double discomfort or, or double discouragement. I mean, on one hand, there's just the normal discouragement of Lord, am I making a difference? Are we doing anything? Mm-hmm. Is this accomplishing anything that you would just feel anyway? Right. But then there's the double discouragement of you. There's a lot of America that the, 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 a lot of the American remnant that is willing to stand in the gap cannot count on the fact that when they go to church on Sunday, they're going to get like that infusion, but back into them, mm-hmm. like they're going to get recharged to go back out there on Monday and do it all over again. And, you know, that's where find a good small group, find people that are like minded and and, and you know, use that to kind of recharge your battery would be my advice. Yeah. So when it comes to, I think, the context in which this question was asked, most of us, you know, most of us have our own gardens to till. I think that's been an expression. Um. I would say you don't really have a choice. Whatever area you've been called to, for most of us, that's going to be, hey, my family first. I'm going to nurture them, protect them, cherish them, equip them. You know, and then your small group or your church, I'm going to pour into that as much as I possibly can. But I would say you don't have a choice whether or not to be determined. If you are operating in a biblical worldview, you know who thought that they had a choice in their ministry? Uh, Jonah. Did he have a choice? He did not. <laughs> he, he, by hook or by crook, he was called to Nineveh, and he got to Nineveh, and he didn't want to, and he tried to run away from that, but he, he didn't have a choice. So that, that might be a little too harsh or too discouraging. It's okay to recharge, unplug, to get ready for the battle again. But I would say, ultimately, if you're operating under a biblical worldview, your determination in whatever your ministry is, you don't have a choice to be undetermined or to let the rope go. That's, that would, that's what I would say. Yeah, and I, I agree with both and a lot of the things that you guys said I was going to say, but to add on really quickly to that, like my favorite Bible verse of all time is John fifteen eighteen, where Jesus said if, says, if the world hates you, know that they hated me too. And that's, I, I find that honestly really encouraging. Like, I feel like a lot of people could read that and think that's honestly kind of a downer, like, oh, I guess the world's going to hate me. But I find that super encouraging to know that like when I'm like facing adversity and like when I'm facing like people coming at me and negative comments and negative things like that, like it's because I'm trying my best to do, you know, the Lord's work Mm -hmm. like he was doing when he was here Mm -hmm. and just all of the examples in the Bible of where they were happy with him one second and then turned on him the second they he didn't say something that they wanted him to say like I find that thing those kinds of things really encouraging and those kind of things keep me determined as well amen amen hey everyone deals with pain from time to time if that's you chances are that is from too much inflammation in the body and that's what's causing that chronic pain what is what do I mean by chronic pain the the achiness the stiffness the soreness that just won't go away uh, no matter what you do And if that's you, try Relief Factor. Um, It's the all-natural anti-inflammatory that is drug-free, even though it was prescribed by physicians who can do drugs. But they recognize there's a downside to taking too many drugs, too. Even if they work for a while, that can... Pardon me, that can put a big strain on other organs like your liver and other things. And so if there's a way to do this naturally, go for it. Now, it may not work for you. They're not guaranteeing it does. That's why they offer you the the three-week quick start for 20 bucks at relieffactor.com to see if you don't see a difference in your pain level in three weeks or less. Why? Because they're confident that you will. Because about 70% of the time people do and they stick around long term with this product. All right. So put them to the test. It's just 20 bucks for three weeks to find out at relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. Or you could call 800 for relief That's 800 for relief or relieffactor.com. All right. Question two. Other than the Steve Day show, of course, what other podcasts do you guys enjoy listening to? Other than your own, of course. So I go out of my way not to listen to a lot of other stuff in this genre. 
just so I can get away with it. One exception, I will try to listen to Daniel Horowitz's podcast as much as possible, simply because he's the one person I know that will out radicalize me and it keeps me honest. Okay, I, I know that he will be to my right, which is hard. It's a hard place to get. It's a hard place to get without being imprisoned to get to my right. Okay, so I, I listen to that when I can. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes it might be for 10 or 15 minutes, but just to make sure I don't go soft to kind of help let yeah. him keep me in check. The rest of the time uh, I'm doing theology and I listen to sports betting podcasts. Why? Because I, because they're the sports betting podcasts are the only sports podcasts left that actually still talk sports. All the other sports podcasts talk drama and, you know, the pol the politicization of the sport itself. And I, I want to get away from this. You know, I want to just talk about the games. And the sports betting podcasts only care about the games and the outcome of the games. So I listen to those. So I listen to a few. The and I'm not recommending any more theology podcasts. They're every time I do, end up being heretics. Every time I do, yeah. everybody's a heretic and someone does something dumb. I can't even recommend dead people anymore. I'm not giving out any more names. All right. OK. So but but that's what I do. Yeah. For me, it's a podcast called uh, Darknet Diaries. It, uh, it's all the world of hacking and cybersecurity. It's a fascinating. There are a lot of fascinating uh, stories that I've heard. My favorite, my favorite episode was actually, uh, I think, called The Courthouse. And it actually had to do with uh, a courthouse here in Iowa, just right next, well, not next door, but the next county over in Dallas County. Uh, Iowa courts hired a cybersecurity kind of consulting agency to get a feel for random spots in our court system. And so they hired this agency to do not only soft, uh, what's called, this sounds terrible, soft penetration, but also hard penetration, so physical penetration of uh, different sites around the, the, the state. And these guys one night decided to, that were hired by this firm, just decided to do their physical penetration of the Dallas County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. The door was not locked. This is like 11 o'clock at, at night. The door was not locked. They eventually got in. They started messing around th with the computers, and then they finally uh, intentionally tripped the alarm that was there, and the Dallas County Sheriff got his panties in a wad, and they wouldn't release him from j It was a fascinating tale, and I, I hope our security in our court system here in Iowa has <laughs> improved after that situation. Before the third and final question, let me tell you about Miracle Made Sheets. These are amazing. And this is the first time in the summer ever I have not had the ceiling fan going on every night to supplement the AC because this stuff really works. Inspired by NASA, uses silver-infused fabrics that makes temperature-regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. And they're just amazing. These self-cooling properties. Um, if you are a, if you're warm-blooded, if you're a hot sleeper at night, and Lord knows I am, you are going to absolutely love these. They're also soft, comfortable, um, quality, luxurious material. Um, they also are self-cleaning. That same silver helps to prevent about 99% of bacterial growths that uh, helps them to stay cleaner and fresher longer. All right. So try them out now. Try miracle.com slash dace to treat yourself. Try miracle.com slash dace backed by a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep today. All right. 40% off. Try miracle.com slash Dace. And when you use that code Dace, a free three-piece towel set, and you'll save another 40% off as well. Can't beat it. All right. Try miracle.com slash Dace. Use the promo code Dace as well. Try miracle.com slash Dace. Promo code Dace. Final question. Also, for my podcast, it would be Matt Walsh because I'm kind of a Matt Walsh fangirl. As I you know guys, you're a Matt Walsh you know. fangirl. Yeah. I let him know that you are. Yeah. As you know, oh, it's every time I've met him, it's literally the most embarrassing experience of my life. My last question for you guys is what helps you decompress or like what's your what's like your perfect night of just like decompressing from everything that's going on? Um, I, I hang out, uh, with, uh, well, your, your sister has a serious boyfriend now, so she doesn't <laughs> care about hanging out with me anymore. Uh, so I come home, get my stuff done, um, and kind of alternate between hanging out with your mom, watching something stupid or just hanging out or, uh, hanging out with your brother and, uh, doing stupid stuff with him. And then uh, they go to bed and I'll just fire up some podcast and either play MLB The Show or Madden. Pretty much what I've been doing your entire <laughs> life to wind down is exactly what I'm doing right now. No. Aaron. Yeah, I, for me, it's it's largely similar. I've been on a Civilization 3 kick right now. It's a turn-based strategy game and I... 
I listen to my I'm getting back into sports podcasts after taking a several month break from them for all the reasons that Steve just said. Um, and uh, yeah, turn based strategy game where I literally just conquer, conquer the world. It's fun. Uh, Steven and I are very competitive people, my husband Steven and I, and so genuinely to like decompress after work or after like a long week, we'll go home and YouTube has these like trivia games and like where they'll like ask you questions and stuff yeah. and we'll stay up until like 12 a.m. Because like one will get one video and then I'll get another video and then we'll be, have to do a tiebreaker because we don't do ties in the Hibbs household. <laughs> it's when are we it's got bad. that? When are we got that? <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. We'll see you tomorrow. John 317.